Hello everyone, it's Glenda and welcome back to Creative Grandma. Today's crochet tutorial is for the Holiday Ripple Afghan. Now I called this the Holiday Ripple because I was using the red, white, and green. But you can change those colors to match your own home decor. You can change the weight of the yarn just by using the recommended hook size on the yarn label and use the multiple given in this video for this pattern. It's a wonderful afghan that you can customize to suit your own needs. So I hope you enjoy today's video. So let me tell you everything you need to make this afghan. So let's go over what you need to make this afghan. I want to give a special shout out to Lion Brand Yarns who sent me the yarn to make this afghan. So thank you so much Lion Brand for your support of my designs. Now when I received the yarn, I really thought it was going to go a lot farther than it did because it was a bulky weight yarn. I thought it would work up quicker, but the yarn didn't quite go as far as I thought because those triple crochet stitches really used a lot of yarn. So an alternative to what I'm showing you here is that you can make this design using one of the Lion brand one pounders and you can choose red, white, and green and make it like in the same style but using those big one pounders. You just need to drop that hook size down to a size 10 J or 6 millimeter and then make it with the five sections where you chain the 152 and you can get the same results. You can use any colors you choose to fit your home decor. It doesn't have to be a holiday afghan, but I just fell in love with this twisted cotton blend with the look of that white. They call it ec root. I call it white. Just the blending of those colors. I just loved how it looked in the afghan. So let me tell you what you need for this afghan. You're going to need six skeins of the Color Made Easy in the color 100 Birch. You're going to need five cakes of the Twisted Cotton Blend. And this is color number 200 Red ec root. You're going to need five cakes of the Twisted Cotton Blend in the green at root, and this is color number 203. You're also going to need a size 10 and a half K or 6.5 millimeter crochet hook. So let me tell you just a little bit about the yarn. So again, if you wanna substitute it with another bulky weight yarn, then go by the yardage. This is color made easy. It is 7 ounces, 200 grams, 247 yards, 226 meters. It is 100% acrylic and it's machine wash and dryable. It's a 5 bulky weight yarn. And this yarn was made in Turkey. So very cushiony, very nice winter yarn if you really want to keep warm and have something really squishy and cuddly and cozy. So that is the color made easy. And then the Lion Brand Twisted Cotton Blend is just a fabulous yarn for a really unique effect on what you're making. This is a 3.5 ounce cake. It's 100 grams, 98 yards. It's 90 meters. It's 69% cotton, 31% acrylic. It is also a five bulky weight yarn. And it is also machine wash and dryable. And this yarn is made in China. So when you put those yarns together, you get this beautiful blending of colors. And again, I just fell in love with it. So let's jump right in and let's get started. To begin our project, we're going to start with our Color Made Easy and the Color Birch. I already have my yarn attached to my hook. Now because my table is white and this yarn is the same color as my table, I laid a piece of fabric down just to make it easier for you to see what I'm doing. So I hope this does not distract you. What I want to do is give you two options for today's tutorial. So with the amount of yarn I used, my afghan was 50 inches across by 54 inches long. So if you want your afghan a little bit longer, but you don't want to purchase more yarn, then we can cut it down to four sections and your afghan will be 40 inches across. 
So what you have to realize with this pattern is it's a multiple of 30 plus 32. So if you want to do five sections, then you have to use the multiple of 30 times four. You'll get 120 and then you add that 32 for your last section to be five sections and you would chain 152 which we're doing today and your afghan would be 50 inches across if you want your afghan longer than 54 inches then i would say you would have to purchase another skein each of the twisted cotton in the red and white the green and white and then an additional skein of the color made easy if you don't want to purchase more yarn and you're trying to figure out how to make a little bit different size then you can cut it down to four sections so the multiple is tricky you have to remember that if you're working four sections you use the multiple of 33 times and then add the 32 for your last section for a total of four so then you would take 30 times 3 is 90 plus 32 it comes out to 122 and then your afghan would be 40 inches across so you can choose to chain 122 and make only four sections and make a 40 inch wide afghan and then you could probably get to about 60 inches with the same amount of yarn or you can choose to do the one I'm doing today here. We're, we're taking the multiple of 30 times 4 for 120 for four sections and adding that last section of 32 chains. And we're going to chain 152. And again, the afghan will be 50 inches across by 54 inches long. So these are the two options you have. Chain 122 for 40 inches wide, or you can chain 152 for a 50 inch wide afghan. And this is the one I'm doing today to match the one that I showed you. So grab your yarn, grab your hook, and let's get started. So my yarn is attached to my hook and I just used the double knot. Now again, you can choose to chain 122 and do four sections, or you can chain 152 and do five sections. So I'm chaining 152. You're going to yarn over, pull through the loop on your hook. That creates your first chain. Yarn over, pull through. That's two, three, four, Five, continue until you have 152 chains for the five section or chain 122 for four sections. Once I get my chain made, I'll be back and we'll start row one. I have my 152 chains made if you're making the five section and you should have 122 chains if you're making the smaller size. Now we're ready to begin row one. We're going to start and skip the first two chain and double crochet into the third chain from hook. You're going to yarn over, insert into the third chain, work a double crochet. Yarn over, pull through that chain. You have three loops. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over and pull through two. This is how you make a double crochet. Now with this pattern, these first two chains do not count as a stitch. So if you're new to this pattern, you're going to put your stitch marker right into the top of this first double crochet because you do not want to get mixed up with these beginning two chains. So place a stitch marker in that first double crochet if you're new to crocheting. So now we're ready to begin our repeat. So if you need help, this is where you're going to click back on the video. This is the start of the repeat for row one, and you're gonna work until I say this is the end of the repeat. So let's begin. We're going to start and we're going to work one double crochet in each of the next 13 chain. So I'm just going to work my double crochet and count as I'm working them one double crochet in each chain for a total of 13. Yarn over, insert into the next chain, work a double crochet. That's one. Two. three, four, five, 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen. Now we're going to work three double crochet into the next chain and that's going to form the top point of our ripple. Yarn over, insert into the next chain, work three double crochet. One, two, and three and you're working all three double crochet into that same chain. So when you look at your work, this is where you're going up the point, up the hill, forming that top point, and now we're going to start working down the ripple to the valley. So I call this the top, and then you're going down to the valley. So now we're going to work one double crochet in each of the next 13 chain. So again, I'm just going to work one double crochet in each chain and count as I go down the point. Yarn over, insert into the next chain, work a double crochet. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen. So now what we have to do is we're going to decrease and pull this together to form our valley, to form our bottom point. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do a double crochet decrease in the next three chain and that's going to pull this together to form our bottom point. So let's begin. You're going to yarn over, insert into that next chain, yarn over and pull through yarn over and pull through two loops only and you're going to leave two loops on your hook. So we worked in the first chain of three, yarn over, insert into the next chain, yarn over and pull through, yarn over and pull through two loops only. You have three loops on your hook and you're going to leave them on your hook and you worked in the second chain of the three required. You're going to yarn over, insert into that next chain, yarn over and pull through. Yarn over and pull through two loops only. You have four loops on your hook and you can see you worked in those three chains. So now we're going to go ahead and decrease and yarn over and pull through all four loops on the hook and it forms your bottom point.
and that is the end of the repeat. So I'm going to lay this down and then you can see how our pattern is forming. Now this is a pretty wide ripple pattern using those 30 stitches for that repeat. So you're going up, forming your top point, and then you're coming down and gathering for your bottom point. So I'm going to work this one more time with you and then you can continue across on your own. So let's begin again. So again, this is the start of the repeat, and we're going to work up to the top point. We're going to work one double crochet in each of the next 13 chain. Yarn over, insert into that next chain, work a double crochet. That's one. Two. three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and 13. Now we're going to form our top point and we're going to work three double crochet into this next chain. Yarn over, insert into that next chain, work three double crochet. One, two, and three. So now we're going to work down the hill and we're going to work one double crochet in each of the next 13 chain. So again, I'm just going to count as I work my stitches, yarn over, insert into that next chain, work a double crochet. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen. So again, you can see how we went up to the top point we work down and now we're going to gather and do a double crochet decrease across the next three chain. Pull that together and form our bottom point. So let's begin. You're going to yarn over, insert into that next chain, yarn over and pull through. Yarn over and pull through two loops only. You have two loops on your hook. They remain on your hook and we worked in our first chain. You're going to yarn over, insert into the next chain, yarn over and pull through. Yarn over, pull through two loops only. You have three loops on your hook. You worked in two of the chains of the three and now we're going to do it one more time. Yarn over, insert into the next chain, yarn over and pull through. Yarn over and pull through two loops only. We worked 
into all three chains and now we're going to decrease and yarn over and pull through all four loops on the hook. And that is the end of the repeat. So that is working one section, you're going up to the top point and then down and gather for the bottom point. So go ahead and click back on the video and you're going to repeat from the start of the repeat to the end of the repeat across to the end of the row and I'll meet you at the last two chains. Now when you're working this pattern, when you get to the end of the row and you're finishing your last section, it is finished a little bit differently. So work across to the last two chains. I'll meet you there and show you how to finish the row. I'm over at the end of row one. I have two chains remaining. So up here is where you worked your top point of three double crochet into the same chain. And then you worked one double crochet in each of the next 13 chains. So when you get done working those 13 double crochet, you should only have a total of two chains remaining on your work. So now we're just going to double crochet two together and decrease across the last two chains only. So yarn over, insert into the next chain, yarn over and pull through. Yarn over and pull through two loops only. You have two loops on your hook and they remain on your hook. Yarn over, insert into that last chain, yarn over and pull through yarn over and pull through two loops only. You have three loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. And that is the end of row one. So now I'm going to go ahead and fasten off my white. And I like to leave a little bit longer length because it helps me with my yarn needle really weave in and secure those ends good. If you cut them up here and you cut them too short, you're not gonna have enough yarn to really weave that end in and then your ends will come loose. So I chain two, one, two, pull my hook up, pull the yarn out, grab the yarn, pinch and pull down. And a lot of people have their own way of fastening off. You can use whichever method you prefer. So now if you're new to crocheting, you may want to put a stitch marker into the last stitch. It's up to you. That way you always know your first and last stitch when you're starting the next row. So now we're ready to start row two. So you're going to uh, grab your red and ecru twisted cotton, attach it to your hook, and then we're just going to join our new color right into the first stitch. So you're going to look at your work, just turn it towards you, and these are the top of your stitches. And we're just going to insert under the top two loops of that first stitch. You're going to yarn over, pull through that stitch, and pull through the loop on your hook. We're just slip stitching and joining that new color. And then sometimes I just like to pull on it and make sure it's nice and snug. So to begin row two, we're going to start in chain one. Now we're going to work a single crochet decrease in the first two stitches. Insert into that first stitch where you joined your yarn, yarn over, and pull through that stitch. You're going to leave your loop on your hook. Insert into the next stitch, yarn over, and pull through. You have three loops on your hook, yarn over, and pull through all three loops on your hook. We just made a single crochet decrease. Now, if you're new to crocheting, you're going to want to put your stitch marker right into the top of this beginning single crochet decrease. So go ahead and put your stitch marker into that stitch and then that way you'll know your last stitch when you're working back across the next row. So now we're going to go ahead and start the repeat. So if you need help, this is where you're going to click back on the video. This is the start of the repeat for row two and you're going to work until I say this is the end of the repeat. We're going to work a triple crochet into the next stitch a single crochet into the next stitch and we're going to do that a total of six times. So let's begin. Yarn over the hook twice, insert into that next stitch and if you have to turn it towards you, turn it. Look for those top two loops. Yarn over, pull through that stitch. Yarn over, pull through two loops only. 
yarn over, pull through two loops only, yarn over and pull through two loops. You just made your triple or treble, however you pronounce it, a stitch. And this is what's going to create that texture on this pattern. So you're going to just take your finger and poke that work down, push that triple stitch towards you, and then you're going to single crochet into the next stitch. Insert into the next stitch, work a single crochet. That is one of six. Yarn over twice, insert into the next stitch, work your triple crochet. Bend that stitch down and towards you, insert into the next stitch, work a single crochet. That's two of the six sets. You're going to triple into the next stitch, Just push that stitch down and towards you, and then insert into the next stitch, work a single crochet. That's three of six. Triple in the next stitch. Push the stitch down and towards you, and single crochet into the next. That's four of six. Triple into the next stitch. Just push that stitch down and towards you and then single crochet into the next stitch. That's five of six. One more set to go. Triple into the next stitch. Push the stitch down and towards you and single crochet into the next. And that is six of six sets. So now when you look at your work, you have three stitches all into that same chain. We're going to work a triple into that next stitch. Insert into the next stitch, work a triple crochet. So now you'll see you're at your center double crochet of those three at the point, and now we're going to form our point. We're going to work a single crochet, a treble, and a single crochet all into this next stitch. So bend that triple stitch down, insert into the next stitch, work a single crochet. Yarn over twice, insert back into that same top point stitch, work a triple crochet. You're going to bend that stitch down and towards you and then you may have to move these stitches over a little, insert back into that same stitch, work a single crochet. You just made your top point. Now we're going to work a triple in the next stitch and a single crochet into the next stitch and we're going to do that a total of six times. Triple into the next stitch. Just use your finger and push that stitch down and towards you and then single crochet into the next stitch. That's one set of six. Triple into the next stitch. and you're going under both of those top two loops. Push that stitch down and towards you and then single crochet into the next stitch. That's two of six. Triple into the next stitch. Push the stitch down and towards you, single crochet into the next. That's three of six. Triple into the next stitch. Bend the stitch down and towards you and single crochet into the next. That's four of six. Triple into the next stitch. Bend 
bend the stitch down and towards you and then single crochet into the next. That's five of six. Triple crochet into the next stitch. Bend the stitch down and towards you and then single crochet into the next. And that is six of six. We're going to triple into the next stitch yarn over twice, insert into that next stitch, and work a triple crochet. Now we're down where you can see our point. We're going to do a single crochet decrease across the next three stitches. Insert into the next stitch, yarn over, and pull through, leaving your loop on your hook. Insert into the next stitch, yarn over and pull through, leaving the last loop on your hook. Insert into the next stitch, yarn over and pull through, leaving the last loop on your hook. You have four loops, yarn over and pull through all four loops on your hook. And that is the end of the repeat. So you can see you worked up the hill, you did your top point, you work down the hill and then you decrease to form your bottom point. So now all you have to do is click back on the video, just start where I said this is the start of the repeat, work until I say this is the end of the repeat, and you're going to work that across to the last two stitches. Again, when you work the last section, it's going to be a little bit differently. You're only going to have two stitches remaining instead of three. So go ahead and repeat that across to your last two stitches. I'll meet you there and show you how to finish the row. I'm over at the end of row two. I just worked my repeat down the last section. And when you're getting ready to do that bottom point, you'll notice that you only have two stitches instead of three after you do that repeat. So we're going to go ahead and do a single crochet decrease in the last two stitches. Insert into the next stitch you're going to yarn over and pull through. You're going to leave your loops on your hook. Insert under the top two loops of the last stitch, yarn over and pull through. You have three loops on your hook. You're going to yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook, and that completes row two. So I'm just going to fasten off my yarn, and again, leave a long enough length that you can weave this in and out on the back. So row two is the front of your work. So when you look at your work, row two is going to be the right side of your work and the odd number rows will be the wrong side. So where your puff stitch sticks out, that will be the right side of the afghan. So I'm just going to fasten off. Now with this yarn, because of the way it's made, I only chain one and then pull my yarn up and pull and tighten that. So now you're going to go ahead and grab your birch color of the color made easy, and we're going to turn our work and begin row three. So we turned our work. I have my birch color attached to my hook with the double knot, and I'm just going to go ahead and secure my new color with a slip stitch into that first stitch. So right where you fastened off, here's your first stitch. If you have to turn your work to see the top of those stitches, go ahead and you're just going to insert your hook under the top two loops of the first stitch and you're going to yarn over the hook and pull through the stitch and pull through the loop on your hook. It just slip stitch that new color through and then I like to pull it a little bit, just make sure it's snug. So we're going to begin row three with a chain two, one, two and this beginning chain two does not count as a stitch. So now we're going to work a double crochet into the next stitch, yarn over, insert underneath the top two loops of that next stitch, work a double crochet. So now if you have a stitch marker, you're going to put your stitch marker right into the top of this double crochet stitch because this is your first stitch of the row. And remember that beginning chain two does not count as a stitch. 
So now we're going to start the repeat. So if you need help, you're going to click back to this point on the video. This is the start of the repeat for row three. And you're going to work until I say this is the end of the repeat. And you're going to repeat that across to the last two stitches of the row. So let's go ahead and begin. We're going to start and work one double crochet in each of the next 13 stitches. So I'm just going to work my stitches and count as I go. You're going to yarn over, insert into the next stitch, and make sure you're always going under the top two loops. Work a double crochet. That's one of 13. Two. Again, we're working one double crochet in each stitch. Three. four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen. So we just worked up to the top point and when you look at your work, you'll notice there's three stitches into that same stitch, so you know you're at your top point. So now we're going to work three double crochet into this next stitch to form our top point of this row. Yarn over, insert into the next stitch, work three double crochet. One, and we're working all of our stitches into the same stitch. Two, and three. Now we're going to work one double crochet in each of the next 13 stitches going down the hill. So again, I'm just going to work my stitches and count as I go. Yarn over, insert into the next stitch, work a double crochet. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen. So we worked up the hill, made our point, we worked down the hill, and now we need to do our double crochet decrease to form our bottom point where you're going to pull your work together. So let's begin that decrease. You're going to yarn over, insert into the next stitch, yarn over, and pull through. You have three loops, yarn over, pull through two loops only. You're going to leave those two loops on your hook and we worked into one of three stitches. You're going to yarn over, insert into the next stitch, yarn over and pull through, 
yarn over and pull through two loops only. You have three loops on your hook, they stay on your hook, and you can see we worked in two of the three stitches. We need to do it one more time. Yarn over, insert into the next stitch, yarn over and pull through. Yarn over and pull through two loops only. We have four loops on our hook, we worked in three of the stitches, and now we're going to decrease by yarning over and pulling through all four loops on the hook, and that creates our bottom point, and that is the end of the repeat. So very simple repeat this row. So go ahead and click back on the video, and you're going to start, and you're going to work one double crochet in each of the next 13 stitches, work three double crochet into the top point, you're going to work one double crochet in each of the next 13 stitches down the hill, and then you're going to do a double crochet decrease in the next three stitches. So go ahead, repeat that across. When you get to the end of the row, you're only going to have two stitches remaining instead of three when we do this decrease. So I'll meet you at the end of row three, in the last two stitches and show you how to finish the row. I'm over at the end of row three. I just worked my one double crochet in each of the 13 stitches down that last section. And when you get to the end of the row, you're only going to have two stitches remaining. So make sure if you're new to crocheting, you're marking those first and last stitches of every row so you know where your stitches are. So we're going to go ahead and double crochet decrease across the last two stitches. Yarn over, insert into the next stitch, yarn over and pull through. Yarn over and pull through two loops only. You're keeping two loops on your hook. Yarn over, insert into the last stitch, yarn over and pull through. Yarn over and pull through two loops only. You have three loops on your hook, you're going to yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. Your double crochet decrease is made, and we're going to fasten off. Now remember, try to leave a little bit longer length so it's easier to weave that end in. And then I chain two, pull my hook up, pull the yarn out, grab the yarn, pinch, pull down, and it creates a secure knot. So again, the odd number rows are going to be the wrong side where it's nice and flat. So you're going to go ahead and turn your work. And then when you turn your work, all the even rows is going to have that texture with that triple crochet. You can see how it forms that texture so you know that this is the right side of your work. So now you turned your work and now you're ready to begin row four. So now you're ready to begin row four. So instead of me repeating everything over and over and over again, all you have to do is repeat row two and row three for the pattern. But every time you repeat row two, you're going to alternate you the red you already done and then you're going to start the next row two with the green work row three in the birch repeat row two in the red repeat row three in the birch repeat row two in the green and so forth and so on until you get to the length you want now with the yarn that i purchased i got 75 rows and then I ran out of yarn. So that took me to 54 inches. Now, if you're doing the smaller size where you only chained 122 for four sections, you can keep going until you run out of yarn and you can have a longer afghan. So again, to repeat the pattern, you're going to repeat row two and row three, alternating the colors in row two from red to green every time you repeat row two, working in birch for every row three. Work until you run out of yarn or get it to the length you want. Now I'm going to go ahead and continue and work my 75 rows and then I'll be back and show you the finished afghan. 
So my afghan is finished. I repeated rows two and three until I worked a total of 75 rows. Now the afghan's a little too big to get right up and show you when I was at the end of row 75. So I just went ahead and weaved in all my ends and this is what the afghan looks like. Now remember, if you're making the same afghan but you chose to make four sections instead of five, then you should have enough yarn left that you can continue and make your afghan longer. This five section afghan measures 50 inches across by 54 inches long and it's just the perfect size to just throw on your couch and cuddle for the holidays. Now remember you can substitute any yarn to make this pattern. All you have to do is use the recommended hook size for the yarn that you're using and adjust your chain accordingly to whether you're using a three, four, or five weight yarn. I hope you enjoyed today's crochet tutorial. You can also customize this afghan in different colors to suit your home decor and use it all year long. So until next time everyone, stay inspired and happy crocheting.